Hello, hello. Today we are going to work on our crazy owls. And this is a project I have not done in a really long time. Um, so I'm excited to kind of do it again. Uh, I used to teach this lesson all about a continuous line. That's originally when I started teaching this. Um, but we've kind of cheated over the years and I've allowed kids to just draw with patterns and incorporate different patterns and different parts of your owl. So when I say continuous line, originally when I would teach this, I would have a Sharpie and we would make this line, this long line, we would kind of repeat, repeat, repeat our lines. We'd go over them a couple times and our pen would never come off the paper until we were all the way finished. Um, so we do a little bit of repeating the lines when we make this. However, it's okay if you pick up your marker. Um, it is easier to just start with a marker, I will say, but there are gonna be some of you that uh, might feel better working with a pencil, that way you can erase things, especially when it comes to the ears. Those are tricky. I'll kind of um, tell you to go slow around the ears and the nose, the beak. Um, this is probably the most difficult part. So make sure to pause this video as I go through it. Um, and it's okay for you to pick up your pen, even if I don't. So the idea behind this project is that we're gonna have all kinds of patterns. So you can tell he's got these kind of swirly loops um, or polka dots uh, on his forehead. He's got a swirly spiral for his eyes. And then he's got this sort of, um, their feather patterns down here. And I actually have, um, I don't know if it's necessarily a pattern with the color, but kind of the rainbow uh, order. And then I've got this sa the same shape for the feather repeated. So that really is the pattern part. Um, and then also I did a zigzag pattern across his chest. So there's texture here where he kind of looks like he's, you know, the soft feathers and maybe a little rougher feathers on his belly. I've got a pattern here, kind of separating his head from the rest of his body. That's what this area is right here, kind of like a chin. I don't know that owls have chins, but that's what I'm gonna call it. Um, kind of the bottom of his head. So I have little polka dots or circles in here. So you can see there's lots of texture and there's lots of pattern and there's lots of color. So these are always a lot of fun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get started and like I said, I have a much smaller paper this time because um, I think you can see the paper better. And I'm assuming you have something closer to this size at home anyway. So when I do it, I start at the very bottom and I kind of go up and I do a loop. And then I do a loop. And just like I said, I'm gonna kind of go over these lines a couple times and notice I'm not perfectly following the line before, and that's okay. You don't have to perfectly stay on that line. So now I'm gonna go up top, and now I'm gonna start making the eye, or sorry, not the eyes, but the beak. This part is tricky. I'm gonna go past halfway, and then down a little bit, and then I'm gonna come up to this line, and back to the ear. And again, I'm gonna, Go over it a couple times, and it's okay if you're uh, if you pick yours up. It's okay if you want to do like a regular beak here, like maybe a diamond shape, and then bring this two these two diagonal lines into the very top of it. You can do it that way. Any way that works for you is the way that I want you to do it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is gonna be the eyes, and again, you kind of follow. but not perfectly the lines that you've had before. So now I'm gonna kind of follow back down and this is where I'm gonna add that chin in. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up my marker for this part. I say chin, I also don't have chins guys, that's crazy. But we know that this is gonna be the end of our, the bottom of our face and the rest of this, everything below this is going to be body. So my pattern right here is going to be zigzags. I'm going really fast, guys. You should always pause as you need to um, because I want you to make sure that you are not being stressed out. If I go too fast, pause it, rewind it, do whatever you need. So, so far, we've got not very many patterns, um, but we've got <clears throat> the, the face, the structure of our owl. 
And now I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna start making the feathers. And all I'm doing is kind of a U or a W shape over and over. And again, I keep mine somewhat connected and they don't have to be perfect. I feel like when they're not perfect is when it looks a little bit more like um, an actual texture for your feathers when they're not perfect. Because if he was a real owl, he wouldn't have perfect feathers kind of laying flat. So now I'm going to come over here and do the same things. So obviously, I've bailed on trying to do this in a continual drawing pattern. Um, sorry about that. But you guys, <laughs> if you want to attempt to do it all in one, uh, line, one continuous line, I say go for it. So here I am trying to get these over here and I want to take them all the way down, getting Sharpie all over my table. Hopefully you are not doing that at home. All right, so now I need to add some patterns. So I need to add a pattern up here. I need to add a pattern here and I have personally never added patterns on his little cheeks, but you could if you wanted to. So I think up here, I'm going to do just a zigzag line, another zigzag line that kind of mimics what I have going on down below. And then I think on his tummy, um, I'm going to do that zigzag line like I showed you in my example. But I'm going to do it a little bit different. Okay. So this is what I came up with. Um, you could always do something in the background, too, if you really wanted to. Um, I might do, like, some swirlies in the background. Um, I might actually not do it with my Sharpie because I want them to be colorful. Um, but I think that's what I'm going to do just because um, everything else is kind of jagged with these zigzag lines. Um, and I want something soft to go along with his eyes. So I think I might do swirlies in the background, but I'm not going to do them with my Sharpie because if I draw them with my Sharpie, then I can't color them in. So that will be added later. So what I'm going to do, like I always do, I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to add a little bit of color to this so that you guys can kind of um, see what I've come up with in the end and what mine looks like. And you can use whatever you want to color this in. You don't have to use, I think I'm going to use marker. You don't have to use marker. You can use uh, whatever you have at home. Um, crayons, markers, watercolor, colored pencils, oil pastels. Some of you guys are getting real fancy with the stuff you are telling me you have at home. I love it. Uh, you could even use mixed media. So we talk a lot about what mixed media is. And mixed media is where you use uh, two or more different kinds of art supplies, right? Materials, medium. Uh, so, <clears throat> if you wanted to do a little bit of crayon and add crayon, even more detail in here, you could do that and then you could paint over it with your watercolor uh, and you would have a mixed media piece of art with watercolor, sharpie, pencil, and crayon. So, I'm going to go ahead and pause and then when I unpause, this will be complete. Alright guys, here is my finished owl. Um, so again, when you color these in, you can use whatever uh, materials you have at home. I just used a variety of markers. Um, I really thought about some of the color uh, theories that we worked on earlier, warm, cool, um, when we did the color wheel and then we, when we did our warm and cool project as well. Um, so I stuck to a lot of the cool colors. Um, on the belly, but I also wanted to add in some warm colors too. And then I used in the background for my swirls, this little pattern in the background, I just used all the colors that I have across my owl and did a variety of um, sizes of the swirls in all the colors, or at least most of them that I used on my owl. So I have the pattern across uh, the top. Uh, I used some intermediate colors up here that we talked about. Remember when you guys made uh, the color wheels, you created those intermediate colors. So the blue, green, the red, violet. In here is a blue, violet. And then I also used a yellow, orange. So I tried to use those. I used cool, like I said, cool colors on the belly. Um, and then I used warm colors on the ear and then of course on the beak. So 
Um, and then a feather, I just kind of tied all those colors in together. You don't have to do that. I just was kind of doing that um, just because it's something we talked about right before this. So again, we've got some patterns, a little bit of texture in the feathers, um, and lots of patterns, lots of color, and some really adorable owls. So good luck, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with.